Morning about the same here for seconds out here with Chris Bulk. Chris, uh, we're here. It's fight week. You're on the undercard of Massey Bill, Anthony Yard, Lyndon Arthur. Uh, just talk to me firstly about getting out again. I know you you were out just a couple of months ago on the George Joyce Wallish card. Um, just talk to me about getting out again. Yeah, you know, I'm, I feel very fortunate. There's a lot of good fighters out there that aren't able to get out. So um, I feel I feel very fortunate. Your opponent this time, uh, Micah Ramabaletza. Um, somebody who's you know been around for a long time, knows the spot quite well, um, and people saying he's been avoided. What what made you th- take this fight on? Yeah, you know, uh, people have been saying he's avoided. Um, he's he's won a few belts as a pro. He's very experienced. He's boxed a lot of good boys. Um, but if, if, you know, if I beat him, I make a statement. And there's a there's a WBC silver title on the line as well. And that must mean a lot because that, that sort of gets you into the WBC ranking. So that's the biggest motivation in regards to this fight. Yeah, of course. And, you know, every fight's big. Um, just got to make sure that you win, you know what I mean? Let's talk about your last outing on uh, the George Joyce Wallish card. Um, talk, looking at that card, you actually seem to be the stand-up perform- performer on the night. Uh, a lot of people are talking about your performance against uh, Ramez uh, Mahmoud um, on the night. He, he was a game opponent, to be fair. Yeah, he was. But uh, you seem to outclass him in sort of every department. Just, just talk to me how you felt in the ring at that time. Yeah, you know, um, credit to Ramez. He was a very fit and, str- and strong kid. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd done what I needed to do and, and, and won the fight convincingly. At what stage in, the career, in, in your career are you at at the moment? I know now it's got to that point where you want to stop fighting for titles. We know Saturday is going to be a big part of the whole journey going forward, this WBC silver title. Um, it, it could be a big thing. Uh, but yeah, what, what sort of point are you at at the moment? Yeah, you know, it's still early doors. This is my ninth fight. Um, it's just all part of the process, isn't it? I don't know what stage I'm at, but um, it's a good stage. You've got a good team behind you, obviously, Martin Bowers and the rest of the Peacock gym. Uh, when you see you know, the others sort of going forward, pushing forward for titles, it must spur you on. Yeah, of course, it's, it's really motivating, you know. Denzel came to the gym the other day with a British title. That's, that's what I want to win one day, you know. What's the plans for 2021? Say you win this fight on Saturday night. What, what do you want to do in 12 months' time? To be honest, I'm not too sure, you know. Um, I leave it to my management and, and, and Frank and stuff to do that. I've just got to focus on this fight and, and making sure I get the win. You know, boxing is a brutal sport. What, what made you get into boxing? Were there certain fighters that you watched when you were growing up? Or, or what, was, what was the situation? Yeah, I'm, I'm not, do you know what? Just one day, my pal was going to the boxing gym and he said, you know, do you want to go? And I went and I literally fell in love with the sport from then. and been in the gym ever since when I was about 15. Was there anyone you used to watch when you were younger? No, um, Gary Mason was a very close family friend to us. So uh, got f- used to know about boxing through that as well. I want to talk about another one of your fight, uh, one of the fighters in the Peacock Gym, Daniel Dubois, fought last week. Um, I just wanted to sort of discuss an issue that's been discussed quite a lot on social media. As soon as he took the knee and straight after, people were calling him a quitter. Uh, what do you make of that? You know, I think it's harsh. Um, Dan's a young kid, a young boy, you know, he's 23 years old and he's going to bounce back. Um, no, no one can really say anything. I mean, he fractured his eye socket from, I think... There's talks of him fracturing it from the third round, and he has nerve damage. You know, Dan's, Dan's a very tough guy. He's not the sort of person that will take a knee, so for him to do that must show you how painful it is. And like you said, you know, he can bounce back. He is young uh, at this time, but when you see sort of rival promoters or rival fighters say, listen, well, not rival promoters, but rival fighters say that we wouldn't take a knee like that. We'd, we'd fight till the death. As a fighter, what, what do you think when a fighter says that? You know, it, I mean, I'm sure some of them feel like that, but you got to think he's a young kid and, and he's got a long career ahead of him and he's got to think about his health first. Chris, what were you expecting on Saturday night from yourself? We know last time you were out, it was a great performance, overall performance from himself. This time round, what were we expecting? Expect the same again. Yeah. Great performance and a win. Chris, just for the people that want to follow your journey on social media, what's your social media uh, handles? My Instagram is at c.borky. Cool. Chris, good luck on Saturday and no doubt we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.